We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of baseball on MLB Network. Tonight, we've got a good matchup in store between the New York Mets and the Miami Marlins. Who will get the better of this compelling matchup? We'll find out next on MLB Network. Caleb Smith gets the ball for Miami in this one. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Hey, we're getting a chance to look at a guy that uh, is a little bit up and down throughout points of his career. A career ERA just over four. When he's good, he can be really good. And when he's bad, well, let's just say he can be pretty bad at times. But it'll be interesting to see which one we see. He's a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde. Hopefully, he's going to be a little bit more Jekyll than Hyde in this one here today. Here's Jake Marisnik. He'll get us started in this one under the lights. Ball. Pitch taken several inches below the zone, in fact. The 2 1. High and deep down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. Perfect baseball weather. 82 degrees at first pitch tonight. This one's down to third. He's got it. And there's one down now. Got it, got it. The third baseman. Number two. Standing in, Jeff McNeil. His career numbers against this pitcher. He's a 375 hitter. Line down the left field line. But this is going to get foul. The 2 2. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit more afraid of the guy on deck than the guy that's up right now. If I'm on the mound, I want this guy up right now. He's the guy that's got to beat me. Line to short, but gobbled up there, and there are two away. Batting third, the first baseman, Pete Alonso. At the plate, Pete Alonso. First chance for him here in the top of the first with nobody on. Hit sharply on the ground. Fielded cleanly. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Mets go down one, two, three. It's the Mets nothing. Marlins coming up. You're watching MLB Network. Jacob DeGrom, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. Dan, any thoughts? This will be interesting. This guy won the NL Cy Young Award last year. He's a solid pitcher, Matt. One of the things he does, he throws the ball into the strike zone, and he's not afraid of contact. Solid pitcher. Now at the plate, Jonathan Villar. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Two balls and two strikes to Jonathan VR. And he tries to get him to reach for it, but it stays outside. Three and two. Now the payoff pitch home. Count remains full. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Hit on the ground to third. Reined in. And a good throw gets him one gun. Batting set. The third baseman. Brian Anderson. So the base is empty here with one away. And that'll bring up the outfielder Brian Anderson. The one two. Swing and he pops him up. Looks to be playable in foul ground. And he'll squeeze this one for the second out. Batting third. No left field. So striding forward Corey. now, Corey Dickerson. Dickerson. No one aboard for him. And two gone here in the first. Bases are empty here with two men out. A 
Oh, they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. Usually you see chases outside the zone on off-speed stuff like sliders, breaking balls, and change-ups. But to chase a fastball that far outside the zone tells me this hitter's not seeing it well at all. The one-two. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Three and two now. Boy, not what you want coming out of the gate as a pitcher, right? You don't want to have to show all of your pitches this early on in the game, but that's a quality at bat. And what does it make you do as a pitcher? You have to use a lot of your pitches, and the more pitches a hitter sees, the better chance they have to make good contact. Left fielder giving chase. He's got it. A great running play, and that'll retire the side. Miami down in order. Still no score. set for the start of the inning and that'll bring in the second baseman Robinson Cano the 2 1 line shot to first and there's one away that is fifth. the left fielder J.D. David so one away here with the bases empty and into bed next will be J.D. Davis. Line drive to left. And that'll go as the Mets first hit of the ball game. The relay but he'll be in there with a double. Yeah I think he was sitting on the fastball so he got the change up he was way out in front of it but he kept his hands back long enough to keep it fair down the line that's not always easy to do. Standing in now Michael Conforto a swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. But that'll be off the wall in right center. He's in at second safely as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. Man, it's like deja vu all over again. Two well hit back to back doubles that bring in a run. This one ends up going off the wall and it looks like they've got a pretty good idea what this guy's trying to do to them out there. Definitely getting some good swings against him. to the plate now Wilson Ramos lays off the slider that time two and one and there are our umpires calling balls and strikes in this one Mr. James Kingsley hey Dero James Kingsley's a pretty good umpire he doesn't get too excited keeps things under emotions he's a pretty good ball and strike umpire yeah James Kingsley will never show you up and he's always approachable turned on that one and crushed it just pulled it a little foul Oh, that's frustrating right there. He was right on that fastball, took it deep, just couldn't keep it fair. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. This ball's down, and that could bring in a run. And the run's going to come into score from second as they grab a two to nothing lead now. And now time is called here as their pitching coach is going to pay a quick visit to the mound to discuss how they want to attack things here. In now, Ahmed Rosario grounded back up the middle. One there. Relayed to Aguilar. The double play, and that retires the side. Four to six to three. They roll it up to get out of the jam. More baseball on MLB Network right after this. Last half of the second set to go and up next will be the power hitting first baseman big Jesus Aguilar. Hey we're still in the early stages in this one they're only down by a couple of runs but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. This one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time. Woo. 
And it's full now, three and two. When you get yourself to a 3-1 count and you get a fastball, those are the ones you really want to punish. Couldn't get the bat on it, so we'll see if that comes back to haunt him. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first out. Settling in now, Garrett Cooper. Garrett Cooper. And he'll watch the fastball miss down low. It's two and one. One out, nobody on. Now he breaks out the hook there. Good for strike two. Yeah, I get it. They want to run this guy's pitch count up, but that was a pretty good pitch to hit. He might be kicking himself that he didn't swing at that one. Hard hit ball to short. Rosario's got it cleanly. And the off-balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. Ready now, Jorge Alfaro to try to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. The slider up into the 90s there. It's one and two. Very rarely does a pitcher like this leave one in a location like that. That's a pitch right there he'd like to have back. He'd love to swing at that one again. The one two. I got to count two and two. Pretty good breaking ball to lay off of right there. If I'm pitching, I might think this guy might be sitting on something off speed. Into the windup. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Left fielder is on the move. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. Into the box now. Jacob deGrom. 9-1-2 and two do up. One of the keys to securing a win. They want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1. Count is 1 and 2 now. Now here's the pitch. Hit weakly back to the mound. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. The center fielder, number 16. So coming to the plate, Jake Marisnik. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Two and two count. Here's the pitch. Bases are empty. One man out. Now a swing and a miss here as he's down on strikes. So it's two up, two down to begin the third. It's always nice to keep a guy that has good wheels Number off good. base. And that's just what they did right there. Big strikeout. Keep that guy off the base path. At the plate, Jeff McNeil hit on the ground down the first baseline. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Down in order go the Mets, but they're on top two to nothing. Bottom of the third now, and set to go is the second baseman, Isan Diaz. Here's the pitch. A bouncer up the middle. Rosario brings it in. And the throw to first is in time. One gone. At the plate, Miguel Rojas. Now here's the pitch. Weak rounder back to the mound. Throw on to first, two gone. Stepping into the box, Caleb Smith. He'll get to take his first cuts here. 
Now the one and one pitch. Whoa, that's up there. Marlins are still on the lookout for their first hit of the ball game. Unable to get the bat around in time, and the count evens at two and two. Now a fastball swung on and missed, and that is out number three. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They trail it here two to nothing. Set for the start of the fourth, and here comes the first baseman, Pete Alonso. Now he gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. Back to the fastball, but it's upstairs. Two balls and two strikes now. That was a tempting pitch to swing at right there. A big power guy like this really wants something that he can elevate and drive out of the ballpark. Dickerson has him played perfectly as he puts it away for round number one. Robinson Cano, the next to dig in, comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. One one home it is looked at for ball number two. Maybe trying to back him up a bit there with the fastball. If I'm in the box right now, I'm coming unglued. He is going to throw something over the heart of the plate. Ball misses there, ball four. Now batting, left fielder, JD Davis. Next for the Mets, JD Davis. He scored a run after stroking a double in his first at bat. Cano, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. Well, I have to give credit to him on the mound for not letting that previous pitch get him. He wanted it, but he didn't get the call. But I love how he didn't let it affect him. And he comes right back with another good pitch and gets the punch out. At the plate now, Michael Conforto. Conforto behind a ball and two strikes can't say he's tickling around the zone those last two pitches were pretty much grooved right down the middle but it didn't bite him two runs three hits and no errors on the Mets line score so far and he'll try to hold up in time but to no avail as he went around and the inning is over so they pick up no runs no hits no errors and a runner left on on now to the bottom half of inning number four. The Mets lead this one two to nothing. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And the switch hitter Jonathan VR will be the next to bat. Things not looking very good so far in this one. But we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs. And this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. Still one and two as he fouls it away. Misses ball two. The classic back foot slider right there with two strikes. Usually gets a ton of swing and misses. Nice layoff right there. Fight for another pitch. The two two. Is looked at and the count moves full. Great A.B. up until this point. A walk right here could really just infuse some confidence into this lineup. Fouled away. The payoff pitch one more time. 
Hit hard. But foul. Now here's the pitch. Grounded up the first baseline. And there's one away. Striding in, Brian Anderson. 0 for 1 after a pop out in foul territory his first time through. No runs, no hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And a slider gets away from him here as it just about got him in the ankle. And he goes and chops this one out towards second. A diving effort here as he gets a glove on it. And not really much of a chance to recover there as he'll reach first on what undoubtedly will be scored as an infield single. Hey, listen, d -Row, they're not going to complain at all. A base hit is a base hit, even though that's an infield single. And hopefully, that's a good sign that things are about to turn for them in this one. Yeah, there hasn't been a fight at the bat rack, per se, Dan, in this one. I don't care what knock. I don't care if it's a swinging bun or a home run into the streets. This could get the offense going. So he gets him swinging on a pitcher's pitch. Corey Dickerson becomes out number two this inning. Stepping in now, Jesus Aguilar down the third baseline. Here's the pitch on two and two. And he fouls this one off. A runner on first with two away. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. 2-2 one more time and it's fouled away. Now another 2-2 lifted in the air out towards left center. After it is Marisnik. He tracks it down and that will end the inning. One left for Miami. They're down two to nothing. Ready to go in the top of the fifth. And that'll bring in the veteran catcher, Wilson Ramos. A swing, and this one is blasted to right field. Nothing's going to stop it. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. And the Mets have taken a three to nothing lead. Well, if you're going to give up a towering blast to one of the best players in their lineup, it's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but a solo shot isn't going to be the deciding factor in a game. Into the box, Ahmed Rosario. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Now here's the pitch. Just a bit low. Tough call, but it's two and two. Uh, the struggles continue, but that happens when you're not able to locate your secondary pitches. You become a one-pitch pitcher. He needs to start to get those secondary pitches over really fast. Hit on the ground out to short. On to first, so a good bounce back pitch there as he gets the ground ball for the first out. So here's the Mets pitcher, Jacob DeGrom. He's 0 for 1 thus far. One out, nobody on. Hit hard on the ground towards second, and that's through for a hit. 
Hey, I've been impressed with this guy. Not only has he thrown the ball well, but now he's mixing in a base hit late in the game, giving his manager options. Whether or not he wants to pinch run, keep him in there, go to the relief. I mean, he's opened up a whole weaponry box for the manager. Three. Standing in now, Jake Marisnik. Fastball, strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are now two away. Number six. In now, Jeff McNeil. Now a swing and a miss, and he's behind one and two. And now the Marlins bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right-hander start to get loose. Working for the punch out and the offering. Line drive, base hit to right. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Now batter, the first baseman, Pete Alonzo. So now to the plate, Pete Alonzo. Ground ball, foul down the left side. Man, he wants that swing back. He'll be thinking about that all night. He crushed that ball. He just needs to stay back a little longer. This one misses, and that'll fill the count here. Three and two with two away. For the guy on the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. The 3-2 pitch. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Two down, runners at first and second. High in the air out to center field. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. But the Mets are able to tack on one thanks to the solo homer. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's 3-0 New York. Welcome back to Miami as we check in with Heidi Watney. Matt, during the commercial break, I had a chance to catch up with manager Don Mattingly about the Marlins' offensive production, and he told me, overall, he's not happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've only managed one base runner in this game, so it's easy to see why he said they haven't shown much fight today. He's hoping to see someone step up and find a way to get something going, though. This game isn't out of hand, so it remains to be seen if they can snap out of this funk and climb back into this one. Thank you, Heidi. Bottom of the inning now, and next to bat will be the outfielder, Garrett Cooper. High and deep down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Now batter. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And up next will be the big catcher, Jorge Alfaro. Count even at two and two to the Marlins catcher. Look at the radar gun on that slider. Off speed pitch, 91 miles an hour. That's just pure filth. The 2-2. Two -two. And he chased it in the dirt. Ramos has got it, but the throw is not in time. Alfaro reaches on the strikeout. So good awareness that time as that'll go as a strikeout, but he's aboard on the drop third strike. Diaz. Into the box now, Isan Diaz. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result as his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll too. And that's in there. Base hit. Hey, just a nice piece of hitting right there. He's able to keep his hands inside that ball, stay square as long as possible, and feed it into the opposite field for a base hit. At 
the plate now. Miguel Rojas. Oh, definitely a fastball swing there, but a good time for the changeup. It's full three and two. Everything this guy throws is hard. That changeup he throws is in the high 80s to go along with that good heater. But he gets back in time safe at second base. The pitcher, number 31. John Birdie will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Number five, John Birdie. Two men are on with two men out. Popped him up. McNeil is under it. And that's the third out. Marlon Strand a pair still down three nothing. Back now for the start of the sixth inning and we send it down to Heidi Watney. Matt during the break I caught up with the Mets manager to discuss his thoughts on his club's offense so far. And one thing he mentioned is how well they're doing it, simply putting the ball in play. We looked into the numbers, and as a team, they've had a contact rate of over 85% in this game, meaning that when they swing the bat, they're missing the ball less than 15% of the time. To put that into context, the Your very best teams lead. in baseball usually now are right around 80% for an entire season. So at least for today, they're displaying an amazing ability to put wood to ball. Thank you, Heidi. Adam Conley takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Digging in once again, Robinson Cano. It was a walk in his last trip. Now the 2 1. Hit down the line at first. And he'll step on first himself for the out. One away now for the Mets in the sixth. And into bat next will be J.D. Davis. Bases are empty. One man out. And he holds off there as the count goes even to the Mets left fielder. It's two and two. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. The 2-2. Two -two. Back up the middle. And that'll get on through into center, and he's got himself a one out hit. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard the single bat. up the middle. Yeah, right watch here. your lips right there. Right Dad there. sent it back right, right where it came from. To the plate now, Michael Conforto. That's in there on the outer half. One and two now. Now a fastball awfully close but he doesn't get the call it's two and two now from the stretch a bouncer to the left side he's got it there's one relay to Aguilar the double play and that retires the side nothing doing for the Metropolitans but they lead it three nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and next will be a speed thread in the form of outfielder Jonathan VR. Not close with the off speed pitch taken for a ball. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. And that one misses, so the leadoff man will head down to first on ball four to start the bottom of the sixth. Well, he loses him there, but that's just the now first back. walk he's given up, along man. with a couple of hits, oh, yeah. so his command has been pretty solid so far. So a runner at first now with nobody out, and that'll bring up the outfielder, Brian Anderson. Too high. Ball three. All you want is the leadoff man to get on to start a big inning. Maybe get a big rally going to claw your way back into this ball game. Out into right center. Well hit. 
VR rounds third and is digging for the plate. He will score as they now trail by only two. The pitcher was spotting his pitches effectively the until left, now, working the edges, painting the corners, Curry. but he left this one right over the plate, and it cost him with an RBI extra base hit right there. At the plate, Corey Dickerson. Uh, could have been three and one. Instead, it's two and two. Action in the Mets bullpen now. It's both a lefty and a right-hander that start to throw. A runner at second, nobody out. And that one never threatened the zone. It's gone full now to three and two. Keep in mind, people, the longer the at bat, the higher the likelihood that this becomes his last inning. Low ball four. I know one thing. He earned that free pass right there. He was tempted with some really good pitches, but he stayed disciplined and drew the walk. Ready for another chance? Jesus Aguilar. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. First and second here with nobody out. And they'll go off speed here as this pitch misses. It's two and one. Great chance right here as a hitter to be really aggressive. With two guys already on, pretty good shot. He's going to get a challenge pitch right here. Now the two one. Aye. He's already walked two in this inning already. This guy just can't seem to find the strike zone. Too close for comfort, and he did a good job just to make contact. You can definitely tell with that foul off right there that he's picking up spin on this pitcher's off-speed stuff. Maybe expect a fastball on this next one. Oh, and they pulled a string on a good changeup there as he swings and misses, and he's set down on strikes for the second time tonight. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location. So a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. Into the box now, Garrett Cooper. Three and one now. Runners are at first and second with one away. On its Taylor made to short. Six, four, three. It's a double play, and the inning is over. Marlins get a run on the RBI double. Bottom third of the order, seven, eight, nine, due up to start the seventh. It's the Mets three, and the Marlins one. Drew Steckenrider is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 71. Drew. Steckenrider. Seventh inning ready to roll. And now it will be the catcher, Wilson Ramos. Pop up. Rojas is there. One away. Now batter. And that'll bring in the former Ahmed. top prospect, Ahmed Rosario. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ball game. Swung on and missed three and two. Sure took a healthy hack that time. Lost him here on 3 2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. The batter, the pitcher, Jacob, the draw. 
So a runner at first now with one away. And that'll bring up the converted shortstop from his days at Stetson University, Jacob DeGrom. The 1-1 home. And now a bunt attempt here as he gets this one down. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. Digging in, Jake Marisnik. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Trying to keep the deficit right where it is, the pitch fouled off. We're in the seventh inning with a good finish brewing. 3 to 1 our score. Counts even a 2 and 2 to Marisnik. And this one's in the dirt. Throw goes to third. And oh, they say he beat the throw safe at third. That can be a tough read as a runner on second to see if the ball has gotten away enough to move to third. You have to be sure you can make it. He was there, and now he's only 90 feet away. High and deep down the left field line. And no one will get this one. Good battle here. This will be the seventh pitch coming up. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. Mets leave one as the lead remains three to one. Red Rock gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Brad Rock. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And next to hit is the catcher, Jorge Alfaro. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast? They could certainly use that right now. And this ball runs away for ball two. Two and one. Fouled away. Two two. He's at the knees and called strike three. Pretty clear he didn't like the call there on the outside part of the plate, but probably too good to take. And he's down on strikes for the second time. Yeah, that pitch was right on the black. Beautiful pitch. And even if we had robot umps, he'd still be out. But the only difference would be he wouldn't be able to complain about it. Standing in now, Isan Diaz. Outside, two and one. Off speed pitch misses here, and he runs it to three and one. Every base runner in a close game like this really matters, so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. There's ball four. And that hole at that, I feel like he really didn't want to challenge him. And I'm really surprised by that because I think this is a guy in the bottom third of the order you have to go right after. Now to the plate, Miguel Rojas. And Dan, what's the plan of attack here for the guy on the mound? Well, I think they have to go right after him. He's pretty unlikely to take you deep. But if you allow him to get on base, the chances of him scoring and tying this game become a lot greater. One one home pulled high in the air out to left field. Davis is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. Matt You're Joyce will come on to pinch hit here in a big mark. spot. Number seven. Matt. Swing and a ball hit softly on the ground. Throw in time and the side is retired. So no runs here on no hits, no errors, and one man left on. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. It's the Mets three and the Marlins one. 
Stephen Tarpley been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 37. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. He steps in off a base hit in his last at bat. Two balls and a strike. Pulled toward right center field. Long run for the right fielder. He gets there to make the play for the first out of the inning. Coming to the plate now, Pete Alonzo. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last A.B. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this A.B. Into the corner and slicing foul. He's ready with the 2-2 pitch. Okay. On deck, the lefty Robinson Cano. And this is swung on and missed. Two are quickly retired to start inning number eight. With how hard guys throw these days, 94 miles an hour is good, but not as impressive as it used to be. Professional hitters can catch up with that, so it's all about setting the fastball up with good off-speed stuff to make it look more effective. And that's exactly what he did right there. So now to the plate, Robinson Cano. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. Now back, left fielder. Digging in to try it again. J.D. Davis, two for three with a double on his line so far. Oh, forget about this one. Bob Bob Bowie. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. So a two run shot to left center as they stretch the lead to 5 1. Yeah, and that home run is an absolute backbreaker. You still have some baseball left to play here, but with a four-run lead, it could be a non-save situation. So they might get the rest of their closer the rest of the day. Four runs feels awfully good. In now, Michael Conforto. Swing and a long drive again. This one to deep center. And it's out of here. Back to back, two out home runs. A solo home run there for Michael Conforto. And it's now a six to one ball game. You could see the center fielder tracking the ball the entire way. He thought he had it, and he might tell you he should have had it, but he just couldn't bring it back into the yard. Sometimes it's a game of inches, folks. Sterling Sharp enters the ball game out of the pen, looking for the final out here in the top of inning number eight. Sterling. Stepping in now, Wilson Ramos. Outside with the fastball as the count moves to two and one now. With this one almost in the books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, D-Roll, but boy, when the weather starts to warm up and the ball starts jumping out like this, it's clear that the pitchers need to start making better pitches. Yeah, just great approach. Really chase today really stayed staunch on uh, on their ability to get that pitcher to come into the heart of the plate and they did damage now with it. The shortstop, 
Boy, there's a long drive bullet off the wall right there, but the outfielder does a really good job, Dero, of getting that one quickly and getting it back in to keep him at first for a long single. Yeah, and also a nice job by the base runner not there, not putting his head down, being over-aggressive and getting thrown out at second base. He saw the play happening. A swing and a miss. That retires the side, and that will do it. So two home runs in the inning lead to three runs on the scoreboard. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. Mets out in front, six to one. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Jonathan Villar, 0 for 2 for him to this point. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Now some action out in the bullpen as a lefty and a right-hander begin throwing. All even now, two and two. Fouls this one off. He's set and the 2 2 pitch. Multiple pitches were fouled off. It gets a little disappointing as a pitcher. So you think, say, I'm going to throw one way off the plate and see if he'll chase it. Didn't happen. Locked in a good battle. Here comes another one. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eight. But that is not the, the way he wanted to start off this half inning. Oh, yeah. It's one thing to walk the leadoff hitter, but it's even more painful when the leadoff hitter is an absolute burner and he can really wreak some havoc on the bases. Up next from Miami, Brian Anderson, hoping to build off that RBI double from his last plate appearance. And he's got to build off that last A.B. He battled. Usually when you battle, you get in that swing mode. A lot of pitches, you'll swing at the rosin bag. I love the fact that he was able to work a double in last at bat. Let's see if we get more of the same right here. This is on the ground over to first. A dive, and he knocks it down. And there is some stick to it of this as they still manage to get the out at first. What a play. Stepping into the box, Corey Dickerson. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. A 1-1. One, one. I got 2-1 to count. Rounded down the third baseline. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at two and two. Full count now, three and two. Swing and a liner. But unfortunately, right after shortstop for the second out. Digging in now, Jesus Aguilar. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. The 1 1 is swung on and missed for strike number two. Two out here and a runner at second. Lifted down the line and left. And this will wind up a foul ball. The one two. The bouncer to the left side. 
And eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. So it's no runs, no base hits, no errors, and a runner left. Ninth inning coming up. The Mets lead it 6-1. to one. Eduardo Nunez will try to get his club a little ninth inning insurance as he'll grab a bat to pinch hit leading things off here. And it's fouled away. Fastball, but that's easy to lay off, and it's back to even at two and two. Well, two straight fastballs inside haven't put him away, so now it'll be interesting to see what he turns to. He gets dirty, but he can't get there, and it's into center field. The center fielder, number 16, Jake Marino. At the plate, Jake Marisnik. That's in there on the outer half, one and two now. And it's two balls and two strikes now. And he'll strike out here yet again, as it's been a ball game to forget thus far, four strikeouts. That was some nice execution on that pitch. Spotted it nicely down around the bottom of the zone. And when you do that, especially with two strikes, not a lot of guys are going to hurt you. You're going to get a lot of ground balls and swings and misses down there. To the plate now, Jeff McNeil hit back up the middle. Fielded cleanly to second for one. Relay to first in time. And just like that, the side is retired. No runs on a hit, no errors, and no one left. On now to the bottom of inning number nine. The Mets are out on top, six to one. Jerry Spamilia, the right-handed reliever standing 6-3, gets the ball now out of the bullpen. Jerry Spamilia. Leading off the inning, Garrett Cooper. And they'll need him to get something going here. Here's the one and one pitch. That's a ball. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. The two one. Is strike two swinging in my opinion one of the toughest pitches in the game to square up just a heavy sinker with good downward action and a check swing here but the bat clearly breaks the plane as he set down for the first out well we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one the bullpen has looked sharp and it backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter these days pitching has become a full staff effort and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far The 2-2. Two -two. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. Takes this the other way to right. And that's into the outfield for a one-out hit. And he's in there easily at second with a one-out double. They haven't had much luck so far tonight, so they'll definitely take that extra base hit. It only takes one, so maybe they can string together a few and get back into this thing. At the plate now, Isan Diaz. And a slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Runner at second here with one man out. Good sinker that time as he gets a piece and chops it foul at home plate. The 2-2. 
2 2. Is laid off and the count runs full. Miguel Rojas waits on deck. The 3 2 pitch. Grounded back up the middle. And that'll get by into center field for a base hit. And they show a little life here as the lead shrinks to 6 2 now. That's the difference in today's games. Pitchers will throw any pitch in any count, but the batter was able to deliver on a 3-2 breaking ball. Into the box now, Miguel Rojas grounded to the right. And that'll get on through into right field for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Nothing fires me up more than watching an offensive player stay inside a baseball and drive it the other way. Edwin Diaz takes the ball now in inning number nine, looking to close the door. Number 39, Edwin Diaz. Francisco Cervelli will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Francisco Cervelli. First and second now, one man out. And this is Pop fouled off to the right and back into the seats. The 2-2. Two -two. Jonathan Villar, who represents the potential tying run here, waits on deck. Here's a shot to right field, and that's going to be in for a base hit. And the run is in to score from second. It's now a 6-3 contest. How frustrating is that, Dan? He tries to bury something in with two strikes, and this guy throws out a fillet of fish to the opposite field. You know, sometimes you have to tip your cap that inside-out swing. As a pitcher, you think you've thrown a good pitch, but sometimes as a hitter, they put a good a swing on it and still ends up for a base hit. So we've got runners at the corners here, one away, and the switch hitter, Jonathan VR will be the next to bat. Right down the shoot that time. One and two. Big pitch coming up right here. He'd love for a ground ball or a strikeout. Runners are at first and third. One away. Swing and a miss. And they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing on that pitch. And he just didn't get the back through the zone in time. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. Into the box, Brian Anderson. Mine to the right side. But he will make the catch on the hard hit ball out there, and that will conclude matters here as this ball game is over. Hey, it's hard to win games at any point, but to win games on the road, especially in this ballpark, so they are very happy with this win. And tonight's comes to an end, 6-3 to three the final. New York crossed the plate three times in the eighth, helping propel them to the win. Jacob deGrom is credited with the win. So that's a wrap for us here tonight. For my partners in the booth, Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak and Heidi Watney on the field, this is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB Network. Have a good night, everybody. The final line score for our ballgame tonight.